and three days today, which means I am in my last week of my second trimester, and that is insane to think about. Like on Sunday, I will be in the third trimester. So symptoms this week have been pretty similar to the previous weeks. The only difference is I feel like I've been more tired this week, but the kids did just start back at school. It's been really crazy and hectic around here, so that probably has something to do with it. Something else that's been happening this week is that my pelvic bone, it has been feeling like bruised, and it's a familiar feeling, so like I know that I've experienced it before, and I don't really know what causes it or why it happens. Like it literally feels like I ran into something like with my pubic bone, and I know I didn't. <laughs> but I've been noticing that feeling a couple times throughout this week. It'll just feel like, um, like sort of bruised. And I know that the baby is head down, and the baby has been a lot more active this last week, so maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not exactly sure. But for the most part, I have been feeling the baby move up like here, and that's probably because the baby is head down and it is posterior, so I'm feeling all the little feet and stuff like that, and little fingers and stuff, and toes and hands and kicks and punches. Something that is really strange and interesting and cool, depending on how you look at it, is that this week I felt the baby's, it was either fingers or toes, I'm pretty sure it was toes. And this sounds crazy, please bear with me, but one of my friends was over and I've mentioned a few times that because my muscles are separated, you can literally feel every part of the baby. Like it's quite, it's pretty insane. Like my midwife was noticing it when she was checking my stomach last week, like checking the position of the baby. She's like, you can really feel where this baby is at. And I was telling her, for sure you can feel like elbows and knees, but I swear I felt teeny tiny little toes and, or something. It felt like this, basically. You could feel very distinct lumps in there, and it was only in one particular part. It was a tiny little bar. I mean, I'm talking probably this big with little tiny bumps on the top of it. It was tiny. I'm used to feeling like knees and elbows and stuff, but that was just really cool and strange and kind of a little bit creepy. So I did feel that for the first time this week and this baby has just been going crazy. It's been definitely a lot more active. I noticed that every time I lay down is when the baby freaks out. It starts like moving around. I think I've heard before that when you're up and about throughout the day, you're kind of rocking the baby to sleep with your motions of walking. So I definitely think that's true with this child because every time I lay down, it starts freaking out and like moving all around, waking up wide awake and I'm like, dude, can you just like chill while I chill and then like not chill when I'm not chill. So also this week I've been noticing that my stomach is feeling harder. And I know that sounds like really weird, but obviously when your uterus gets bigger, your stomach feels hard. And like when you're pregnant, like the big bulge, if you've never been pregnant before and you've never felt a pregnant belly before, but the big bulge is hard. It's like a hard ball basically. <laughs> and I did start off a little bit heavier this pregnancy, but I don't know. I still had like an average body type. I didn't really have too much like excess fat, but I did have more of a little pooch on my stomach. And I feel like the pooch is disappearing. And I think that's just because my stomach growth and it's just like distributing. I don't know. It's just really weird, but I feel like my stomach is like super hard now. I have still been feeling a lot of Braxton Hicks contractions. Nothing obviously consistent. They're just purely Braxton Hicks, just the practice contractions. I've been noticing them a few times a week and they just get like super, it's not even quite to the point where it's like uncomfortable yet. I'll just notice my stomach getting like super tense and I'm like, oh, I'm having a contraction. <laughs> I did buy a crib this week and it is not here yet. I bought it off of Amazon and it should be here, I think it said the 24th, so like middle of next week. People were asking me if I still had Landon's crib because Landon slept in his crib pretty much until we moved here. And so we moved it to this house and we just never set it up and it's been in our garage ever since. So we actually do have his crib However, since we're planning on having this baby in our room for, I don't know, my babies are always in my room for a long time. We are planning on setting up a crib in our room. And I know we're being picky about this, but like in our room, all the furniture is white. So we decided to get rid of Landon's crib because it's a, it's a dark wood crib because where we lived before, my room was all dark wood stuff and we did get all white furniture now. So we are going to replace that crib and get a white crib. And we finally kind of developed a consistent like a uh, color scheme that we're going with. And it's mostly due to the fact that it's the colors of our room. Our room, I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody's really like 
seen our room. I think there's been little snippets here or there, but our room is all white, gray, and yellow. Obviously, when you're searching for gender neutral stuff, it's things like tans, grays, yellows, greens, stuff like that. Generally speaking, I mean, there can be other colors that you can see as gen gender neutral depending on like what outfit it is, but since our room is already gray and yellow and white, we've pretty much been sticking with the gray, yellow, white things for this baby as well. So I did purchase a comforter set for the crib, like a crib set. It's gonna be gray and white and I'm gonna add some like yellow accents in there and I've been buying, anytime I see like a cute outfit that's like gray or yellow or white or a blanket or something like that, I've been kind of snatching those up as well. So that's kind of like what I've been sticking with. And it seems like we've gotten more than one thing this pregnancy that has whales on it. And I don't know if that's like a thing right now. I never thought of whales to be like a cute baby symbol, I guess. I know like giraffes and like, I don't know, other animals like that, but whales, that's new to me. I did get a bobby pillow that has whales on it and then I have a blanket that I'll show you guys too that I got this week that has a whale on it also. This is kind of what I'm talking about and I'm going to do a whole haul of things that we got for the baby so far, which isn't a whole lot only because there's not a whole lot you can buy just because we're kind of waiting to buy the majority of the clothes because if it's a boy, I want to get like super cute boy boyish looking things I guess and if it's a girl I want to get like pink things you know like it's my last kid I'm gonna go all out so instead of just like buying a ton of gender neutral things I'm just buying a couple things here and there that I see that I know I would want the kid to wear like regardless of what it was <laughs> so the only thing I've really been buying is um, things that I like can't say no to or like blankets and stuff like that because you can never have too many like receiving blankets and like regular blankets and then we got like a bobby pillow and stuff like that so I pretty much just got like most of the necessities I think so we did go to Ross recently and they had two blankets and this is whenever I finally decided like for sure we're gonna do the yellow and gray and white theme for this baby also but this one was $6.99 from Ross and as you can tell it's just like the gray and it has like what is that called like the mincy pattern or whatever that is and it has the yellows and the grays and it's just like so freaking adorable and extremely gender neutral as well and then we we also got this one from ross and it was again 6.99 and this is what i was talking about the little whales like i said i never thought of whales being something that you would find like in a nursery, but it's actually really cute. This has whales on it and then the other side is yellow. The bobby pillow that we have has a whale on it as well. And I guess it makes sense because when you're looking for gray items, a whale is gray. So it actually does kind of make sense. I'm not absolutely in love with the, the idea of whale stuff, but it is really cute. I did want to mention too that I have not gotten any new stretch marks. I know a couple people have been asking if I got any new ones, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell, um, but like all of my old stretch marks are visible and they've always been visible. Like you can see them, but they're very uh, skin colored. Like they're not, they don't stand out. They're not pink. Like when you get the new ones, you, they turn really pink. I honestly don't know if my stomach is, can even possibly get any more stretch marks. Like it's covered in stretch marks from my pregnancy with the twins. If anyone remembers if I got any stretch marks with Landon, remind me because I do not remember if I got any more with him. I wanna say no. So far, so good this pregnancy as well, just sticking with the ones that I already have. But I have, however, noticed that my umbilical hernia, which actually was, it wasn't gone when I got pregnant, but it was significantly less than it was like right after I had the twins. And just this last week, I've been noticing that the way that my belly button sticks out, it's an, at an awkward like, it's not just like a normal Audi belly button with a pregnancy. It's very hernia looking, if that makes sense. And there's a little spot that I can feel on it where I can tell that it definitely is a hernia. Probably the one that I've already had this whole time, but it's just becoming like more noticeable again. So it'll be very interesting to see what my stomach looks like after I have the kid. So symptom wise, I think that's pretty much it for this week. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my 27 week belly. So here is with the shirt on, it's kind of an awkward like fit cause it's not a maternity shirt. And here's with the shirt up. But if you could see here, my stomach almost looks bruised. But this is like a really awkward, um, it just feels really awkward. And then my, my belly button up here, you can see it pokes out at the top, but not at the bottom. So I'm definitely thinking that that is just like pure hernia right there. It, like When you look at the side, it looks so weird. <laughs> This is probably so weird right now, but like when I push it in, you can tell that there's like 
something not right there. So, and then, okay. So there is the 27 week belly. So that is it for this week's pregnancy vlog, guys. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat for more frequent pregnancy updates. And since I'm doing VEDA, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. But pregnancy-wise, I'll talk to you guys next week when I'm officially in the third trimester. Bye. My name is Lilia. And my name is Alina. And today, we're done, gonna do a best friend video. Our moms are gonna ask us questions, and we're gonna answer them. Let's